ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Would you be so kind to take your seats? We will start with our session four, A, on virtual worlds. Uh, uh, do take time to look at the our slides concerning the organization, and please would you be so kind to fill in the evaluation questionnaires, helping uh, the organizers and the program committee to make further conferences even better than this one. Uh, I'm happy to chair the session in which uh, we are actually considering how to use the uh, network technologies that are rapidly being developed. So uh, in this session we address the things that came out as the opportunity to design and build sophisticated applications on top of the existing uh, network infrastructure and architectures. And uh, virtual worlds come as, as, as a natural title for, for, for this presentation. I am also uh, have unhappy duty to say that the third, third paper, Web Control Submillimeter Web Bay Spectrometer by Tigran Zakarian and co-authors will not be presented because they were not able to come, sadly. Uh, so let me, let me continue with our first talk, be delivered by uh, Mr. Igor Pandic, who is assistant professor at the Department of Telecommunications at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing, University of Zagreb. And um, he'll talk, is titled Multimedia News Presentation on very low bit rates. So without further delay, Mr. Panjic, would you be so kind? Uh, thank you, Miro. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> so uh, I will talk about uh, a fairly novel way of uh, presenting news or uh, any other uh, content or information for that matter uh, using something called a virtual newscaster or a virtual presenter. Uh, before I go further into my presentation, has anyone heard of uh, something called Ananova? Anyone? No one? One? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe one more. Well, anyway, uh, uh, Ananova is a company uh, who uh, marketed itself a few years ago as a, as a first virtual newscaster. They basically they had a, a news website and then uh, they had a very brilliant marketing campaign uh, saying they have a first wor world's first virtual newscaster and it was uh, basically delivered uh, as, uh, as video feeds. They, they had some pre-rendered videos of uh, very nice, nice looking virtual person and uh, you could see it on their website and they managed to make a lot of hype about it and they managed to get the company sold for an obscene amount of money to Orange that was later bought by France Telecom. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to present you something much more uh, technical than that and I hope uh, more interesting in, in, a, in a sense of uh, possibilities of interacting uh, with the system. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to do is um, deliver fairly rich, um, fairly rich multimedia content with, with animation, with voice, with some graphics, uh, something that would be completely interactive, that would allow you to get uh, news on demand as you like it. Uh, I wanted to have it with uh, very easy access, uh, meaning low bit rate, low processing power, so basically any user of the internet today or even uh, some time ago when I started working on this kind of system should be able to connect and, and get this service. And finally it should be fully automatic so you don't, you don't have to spend extra time uh, producing special content for this kind of system. Uh, this is what it looks like to the to the user, to the to the end user. Uh, you have uh, the as the main feature, you have this virtual newscaster, which is uh, a 3D rendering of of a, of a person 
uh, artistically designed, hopefully nice. Uh, who is talking? I'm presenting the news. Uh, you have the you have the news selection area. This is where you choose what you uh, what you want to hear about. And you have a dynamic graphics area where uh, the graphics come up. Come up. Uh, you will see a demonstration at at the end of my presentation. And uh, now I'll spend the bulk of my talk giving you the uh, giving you giving you some technical details how this actually uh, how this actually works. Um, well, because I, I was told this is a very technical conference, you have to you have to get 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 down to technical stuff. So, uh, okay, this is this is the system as the as the user sees it, and then um, how how is this actually produced? Well, there are uh, there are three main components. One component is the actual delivery part, uh, which happens in a in a standard web browser without any plugins or anything. And then uh, you have some preparation parts. One is making the making this newscaster, uh, producing a 3D face that can talk, and then the other is actually uh, making the news itself. And then so the newscaster you would typically you would make the the, the you would design the face once and then just let it work for a while. Uh, you wouldn't change it every day probably. But then the news you would you would update at least every day and maybe uh, maybe even 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 more often. So uh, I will now in the in the next part of the talk go into details of how each part of the system works. So in order to to make uh, a new caster, you have to design the face, and then you have to find a way to animate this face. And uh, uh, the way I do it is with something called facial motion cloning, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a, in a second. And then uh, making the news is based on uh, uh, on an XML structure, which contains the news, and it contains the pointers to those graphics, and it contains some structure, which allows the system to Create uh, this this fully interactive website uh, completely automatically, and this part also contains some uh, something called visual speech synthesis, which is like speech synthesis. Only it also creates the uh, lip sync information, so that you can get the, the the virtual person to talk. So now I'm going to one by one go into even more detail. Uh, maybe more detail than you would like on each part of the system. So basically this part making the news faster, uh, this part making the news, and then this part actually delivering the news. So <clears throat> as I said, in order to, in order to make uh, a virtual person, you have to first design the 3D model. And that's something that typically uh, an artist or designer would do uh, using one of the standard 3D 3D modeling tools like like Maya or 3ds Max or uh, something like that. Um, that's uh, well, I, I wouldn't say the easy part. It's, it's not really easy, but it's uh, uh, let's say it's it's uh, uh, it's, a, it's a standard thing. Then um, then you have to get the space to animate because when somebody makes a 3D model uh, by itself, it doesn't know how to talk or how to even open the mouth or anything. So. Uh, you have to do something. There are, there are several ways you can get the face to animate. Uh, one of those ways is, is using so-called morph targets. That's, that's probably the simplest way. That's why I chose it. Uh, the, the way it works is, is very simple. You have the face in a, uh, in a neutral position, and then you have the so-called morph targets. And morph targets are simply the same face, but with the mouth open, uh, then with the mouth in, in another shape, maybe for the, for the phoneme. E or O or whatever, and then for every movement uh, you want, you have one more target, and then later you just uh, do a linear interpolation between all those more targets. Uh, that's that's easy. Uh, the only problem is if you tell the artist, okay, now please create uh, 86 more targets, they will just go crazy because it's a lot of work. So, uh, in order to go around that problem. Uh, I've, I've, I've created a method to do this automatically, which is uh, this facial motion cloning. That's uh, that's the process that allows you to 
take uh, one phase that that already has all those morph targets. So, well, in the beginning, somebody has to create it. You can't you can't really completely get around that part. But let's say this this tedious process would happen once. So now imagine that for this red-haired face, you have all the morph targets. You have everything necessary for animation, and then you create this this new face, this uh, male face. And for this face, you don't have anything yet. This this face is completely static. It doesn't know how to open the mouth yet or do any other movement. And then what you do is you take the movements from this face by subtracting the positions of vertices in, in the model and ob obtaining so-called motion vectors. So you, you kind of subtract the model with the movement from the neutral position. And then you, you, you get just the motion. You, you, you just know that this part of the face should move. And then you apply this motion to to this face, and you get this. You get this new face with the open mouth. And you repeat, repeat that for all the morph targets you need, and voila, you have the, the face that can now be animated. This is a, a little bit more complicated than, uh, than I'm uh, presenting here, and I, I have published elsewhere a much fuller report on uh, all the uh, details of this method. Anyway, here are some results. Here you can see how, from one face, you can you can get you can get the the same expression on many other faces, and later you will see also how you can get the full uh, the full face animation produced uh, uh, based on this process. Um, now we are coming to the part of making the news. And this is th that part of the system. If you remember that first big big diagram, so how do you actually how do you actually make uh, the, the, the contents? How do you feed anything into this system? Well, uh, the news is uh, structured in a, in a in a fairly simple XML file, which I which I will show you, uh, which basically says, okay, these are the topics and these are the news items, and it contains some links to some uh, to some images, and then the the system reads. Uh, this file, and when it comes to each uh, news item, it it reads this text and uh, uses the speech synthesis, the visual speech synthesis, uh, to create the speech and the animation for the for the newscaster. So the the, the, the speech is created by the uh, standard speech synthesis uh, software, uh, SAPI compliant speech synthesis. And then, in order to get the visual speech synthesis, you just take the the, the, the standard speech synthesizer and you you intercept some events that happen there. And basically, the uh, SAPI compliant speech synthesizer will tell you, "Oh, now I'm generating this phoneme, and this is the exact time in milliseconds when I'm generating this phoneme, and then the next one." And then from this, you can you can generate the leap movement, and that's what you that's that's what we do here. And then this is stored in files. So the the audio is stored in um, uh, in GSM format, and each news item is stored in a separate audio file. And then uh, you have uh, the files with animation, which are in in uh, in an MPEG-4 format. I, I will tell you a bit more about about that format in a second. And then, uh, apart from those those uh, files with the actual speech and animation. You, you need to create the actual structure of the website, so those topics that appear in one frame uh, with, uh, with some kind of labels so that users can, can click there, and then uh, some scripts that will make the newscaster uh, play those, uh, those news at appropriate times. Uh, this complete structure is uh, simply generated based on the, on the structure in the, in the XML file. So this is what an XML file would look like. Uh, so you just have some introductory stuff like what will be the, the logo that appears and what is the welcome text and then what, which voice you are using. This is important. So you, you, have, you have some uh, uh, SAPI compliant speech engines on your machines and you just give the name here and you say, okay, I want Mary for anybody who, anybody who knows anything about SAPI. Mary is, Mary is that... Uh, uh, the, the, the basic voice that comes with uh, Microsoft's implementation. Uh, and then 
and then you go into really the news. So you have you have topics one by one. So one topic con consists of uh, several items, and it has it has some kind of name. That is what will appear in the menu. So when the user chooses headlines, all these news items will be presented, and then each news item consists of text which is spoken, and then of image of an image that is presented at the same time. Um, this is uh, yeah. This is this is this is the way it is uh, working right now, and of course there are ideas how to how to extend this. And um, I'm I'm talking with uh, uh, with, a, with, a, with a friend of mine who happens to work at the Croatian news agency, and we are looking how uh, how we could connect this to uh, to their content management system, which shouldn't be shouldn't be too difficult. So you can get the news. The idea is that you get the news automatically extracted. And uh, because they have the news anyway, so you could uh, you could create all this stuff automatically without uh, without any extra work. Actually, you could just simply pick the, the, all the data from the database and automatically update uh, this kind of service and have it on the web all the time. Uh, of course, you could you could also extend this structure to have maybe uh, more levels of menu or whatever. And uh, uh, certainly, you could have you could have personalized personalized news, and so that the user can say, "Oh well, I, I, I want to have the news with a with a virtual newscaster, and I want my virtual newscaster to be female or male or whatever." And and I am only interested in sports, and I don't want any politics. So you get you get your own choice of news being presented, that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, and now the last uh, part of the system, which is actually. Uh, Delivering the news, well, uh, obviously the for me the main the main challenge and the the main interest was uh, building this virtual newscaster and some, something that would deliver this virtual newscaster, and um, well at the same time the system had to support uh, somehow this dynamic graphics things and everything had to work in a in a standard in a standard web browser. I didn't want any uh, plugins to be necessary so that really anyone can can access this very uh, very easily and uh, this is solved by basically using standard HTML content and the virtual newscaster is implemented in a uh, in a Java outlet now the way uh, I, I've mentioned uh, a little bit before that the those face animations are generated and stored in the in an MPEG-4 format, and now I would just uh, I'll just make a small uh, digression. I say, say a little bit about the MPEG-4 format for face animation, because this is one of the um, less less known parts of, of MPEG-4. Uh, who is familiar with MPEG-4 at all? Uh, not so many. Well, okay. Uh, MPEG, MPEG, it's in, in general. Uh, without the number after it is pretty much a household name. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it is pretty well known as a standard for video uh, video compression, right? And MPEG-1 and MPEG-2 are very, very widely widely uh, used, right? You all have them at home in your in your DVD players. And then MPEG-3 MPEG was for some reason skipped, and then MPEG-4 uh, came along some some years ago. And it, it it was a very ambitious project, and uh, it's uh, I, I, I really would not have time to tell you much about it at all. But uh, one one of the features uh, that are uh, interesting is that MPEG-4 actually has one part of the standard, one so-called profile in in MPEG-4 terms. Uh, there is a profile uh, for face animation. You have the full specification of how you uh, specify and, and encode uh, efficiently the animation of a human face. And um, this has been standard since 1999. Uh, it's very widely used in, in academic circles. Everybody, pretty much everybody who, who is doing research on face animation would uh, typically use uh, or at least do something about, about this standard. And it's also spreading into, into industry as, as also face animation products emerge. There is a lot of uh, interest in, in supporting this standard too. 
Um, I'll just give you a brief summary, and if you, if you would happen to be interested in knowing a little bit more, I can, I can recommend uh, a very good book that I co-edited, so that's why, of course, I can recommend it. Uh, so any, anyway, this, this MPEG-4 face animation standard is, uh, okay, in, in a nutshell, it's, it's, it's very complete in the sense that you can describe almost any facial expression with it. Um, it's pretty efficient, meaning that the parameters don't repeat, there is not much, much redundancy, and it can be coded extremely efficiently. Uh, I will tell you the bit rates later. Um, it's, it's fairly simple, okay, I mean, facial animation is a complex thing, so uh, you can't make it very, very simple, but uh, we made it as simple as it, as it was practical, I would say. Uh, so basically the standard defines the movements of, of uh, certain facial points. And very importantly, it's, it's reusable and it's portable, meaning when you have a bit stream that defines the animation of a face, you can apply it to the model of my face and you can apply it to the model of your face or to the face of, uh, let's say, Yoda or uh, even to the face of, of, of a cartoon character. Uh, because it's uh, because the parameters are normalized, so they will they will work on, on any face. Uh, anyway, since uh, uh, since I thought that this standard is, it was a very nice thing, and standards in general are very nice things, so obviously I implemented uh, in in this system I implemented the face animation player to be MPEG4 compatible. So it contains an MPEG4 FB decoder, and then it contains a system to actually interpret those decoded parameters and to move the face. And as I said before, this is based on a principle of weighted morph targets, which means that you have, for each parameter that moves some part of the face, you have one morph target. Oops, sorry. Uh, you have one morph target. So for example, this would be one morph target uh, corresponding to one parameter which moves the outer uh, middle part of the lip and then uh, another parameter which moves this part of the lip has its own corresponding morph, tar morph target and then the inner contour of the lip is moved by yet another parameter and then when you when you join all these to all these movements together you get you get the the final shape so you can uh, by by interpolation and addition of all those parameters you get a pretty big parameter space and you can implement the whole uh, the, co the whole standard like that the advantage is that well, this is something that's very straightforward. I mean, you're, you're, just, doing, you're just doing linear interpolations, and that M MPEG-4 FBA decoder is also not a big deal to implement. So, so this is a very, uh, this is a very easy uh, thing to implement. It's also very light, so it can work on uh, on a lot of different platforms. And uh, just just to, to 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 illustrate that, these are some of the platforms on which uh, this has been implemented, and this includes even, for example, uh, a prototype on a, on a Symbian platform. And uh, now there are some students of mine who are working on a, uh, on a much better version on on on, on the uh, later version of Symbian, and even on on Java 2 micro edition. Uh, so anyway, the one that I'm using here is the one that works in a, in a Java applet on, uh, in, in, in our web page and presents the news. And just to give you the idea of uh, the bandwidth requirements, as I told you before, that this should work for everyone. So uh, the applet size itself is about 150K. And then uh, the other thing you need to download in the beginning is a face model, uh, this 3D face model and any texture that it might need, which is about 50K uh, for a reasonable face model. Uh, which would already be pretty good looking. So it's, you have a download of, of about 200K, which is, which is not, not such a big deal. It's acceptable. And then you come to the rest. The rest is the streaming part. After, after that, you're just streaming data. And you're streaming audio, which is GSM encoded at 13 kilobits per second. And uh, now here comes the, 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 the really nice part. You're, you're streaming those FBA bit streams. And if, if, you use, if you use the so-called VZIM encoded, I, I won't go into details, but that's one of the ways to use the standard. Uh, you can get face animation at, at as much as 0 0.3 kilobits per second. That's, that's really uh, very low. And, and even if you use 
if, if you use all the capabilities of the standard, like all the bells and whistles, you will not manage to get more than six kilobits per second. Uh, so this is, yeah, it, it is low bit rate, right? And, and I would also say that, that you can put a stamp on it and say this is acceptable for modems. Uh, the way I tested it is I, 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 I asked some friends who use modems to just go there and, and look at it, and they maybe they complained that the face looks stupid or they don't like this or they don't like that, but they didn't ever tell me, oh, this is too slow. So uh, it seems that they found it acceptable. Uh, in terms of performance, uh, in terms of CPU power that you need, uh, here, is, uh, here is some data for uh, various kinds of models, how fast the system can work. And so, for example, on a 600 megahertz machine, which is really quite <coughs> pretty outdated even today, you get consistently more than 10 frames per second or even much more, except on this model, which is really not realistic, like 17,000 polygons. You wouldn't, you wouldn't really expect that. So, yeah, uh, it's on, on today's average PC, this, this really works. Okay, and just a very, uh, a very brief comparison with other kind of media. The, the, the point of this slide is, is, is just to say that, okay, this is a, uh, the idea is to, to kind of try to put together the, the good sides of uh, different, different kinds of media. And, yeah, I'm, I'm already a little bit over time, but I will abuse because no, we... You, you can use more time to, to, if uh, you want to show us the, because the last living the, the, system. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we will come to the demo part. So we will see if it... Mm, the sound works. Thank you, guys. So, okay, I'll just click on, let's say, sports. I'm not sure how much you can understand because we, we had some problems with, uh, uh, with, with playing the audio. Um, I'll, I'll just show you how you can use this for some other kind of presentation which has nothing to do with, with news. This is basically the, the system presenting itself. Well, I, I don't know how much of that you could have, you could hear, but anyway, uh, this is this is available online. And, I mean, this this was online from uh, from our uh, web server at the university, so you can always uh, you can always go go there and, and reach it. And I I think you probably got the idea, and uh, I will I, just abuse your time a tiny little bit more to say since this is a, a Carnet co-organized conference. Uh, I would like to point out that we are currently working on a pilot project together with Carnet where we are using this technology for uh, a more general presentation of, of information and actually the uh, Carnet's uh, video conferencing service will in a few months be presented by a hopefully very good looking young lady who will tell you everything about video conferencing and how to set up a video conferencing room. There will be a 3D model of video conferencing room with some interactions there that uh, some, some students there are working on. Uh, and 
she will also tell you how to conduct a successful video conferencing, including how you should get dressed and how your presentation should be. And she will probably tell you to cut it short and not go over time. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Panjic. As far we are short of speakers, we could not be short of questions. So if there are any questions, we have a time. Just raise your hand, you will get a mic, and you can ask a question. Are there any questions? Yes, there is, please. Just wait, and the mic is coming. Here. Um, thank you. James Hutton from Yukona. I wonder whether you thought of selling this system to some of the um, travel companies, the railways or the, or the airlines, to try and improve the information they provide on, on, you know, on train departures and flights and so on. Um, I, I didn't spend much time actually trying to sell this system, though I, I wouldn't mind doing so. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but the answer is I didn't. I, and also, I, I, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good idea, sure. If you, if you have some contacts, please tell me. <laughs> I think all of them could do with improved presentation on information. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, some more? Yes, there is. Hi. Can you, tell, can you tell me a little bit about how the audio is presented within the XML? Is it streamed live or um, also what types of codecs are you using for the audio? Um, I'm not sure. If, I didn't hear so well, but it was about the audio. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the audio is uh, uh, generated uh, offline. So you have, the, you have this XML file and then in a pre-processing step you generate all the audio files and after that, you stream the audio file. So it's it's uh, uh, yeah, it's it's working in a streaming mode, but streaming from a file. It's not streaming directly from uh, speech synthesis. If that was your question. Uh, uh, any more questions? Uh, if not, then thank you again. Thank Mr. you, Panjic, and uh, yeah. You will be you will be around and if somebody wants to buy your system you, know, you are more than happy huh okay uh